Welcome everyone to Tootsie's Lair Spectaculum. In this video, you get a front row seat as you watch my journey as I hit financial freedom. Will I be successful? Will I not? This channel will have everything you need to know about how I'm making these first baby steps. And do we have financial freedom? Not at all. Yeah, but we're working towards it. So, you know, this is what that channel will be about. How I might get financial freedom one day. All right. So... Since it's a spectacle, I'm going to have some videos in here in between and between like this is episode 101 or 101 and between that 102, we're going to have other videos of like random things and you're going to wonder, hey, is uh, Tootsie's Lair normal? And the answer is, or is Stuart normal? And the answer is probably not. I'm a bit insane. But if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you want more, please hit that subscribe button. We all know that the YouTube gods love when you show them a little bit of loving. And they'll send love your way. Just more of this. So who knows? Maybe you don't want more of this. Anyway, without further ado, a lot about me in a very short amount of time. So my name is Stuart Spencer Braco Potter Brown. Yes, I have five names. What of it? Uh, and at the age of five, I would perform uh, plays on my bed for my brothers called Mr. Carrot and Mrs. Carrot. Yes. And I still pursued acting into my college years where I went to film and television in college and theater acting and had to eventually move to BC of British or British Columbia and then had a starring role where I took scissors and butchered my hair for BC Hydro. I have that video like somewhere. I'm sure I could track it down. I just need to take a very good look for it. That was my starring role. I had a bunch of auditions after that and I keep trying, kept trying and my acting career died as a background performer. Where as a background performer, it's like I'm walking from point A to point B for the rest of my life. I can't do this. So you would like me to lean on the chair, wait five beats and then walk out the door? Yeah, I can do that. Oh, you want it the other way okay you want me to come through the door and then lean on the chair yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, got, I got you i got you hell this is what my life has come to walking from point a to point b i need out so then i gave up uh or i called my agent and said hell no more and I did what any sir or what any actor, starving actor would do. I also served at Ricky's All Day Grill, Swish LA, and uh, worked at Cineplex in the VIP area as a server. And one of my coworkers actually told me one day was like, "Hey, you should join this Facebook group page and get on as a production assistant." And I'm like, "Hell yeah, I should do that." So I joined the Facebook group page, found a job the next day. I wasn't working at Cineplex that day. And went in 16 hour days, made more money than I did as a server in a week. And I sat on the street in Maple Ridge watching some film gear and I loved every second of it. I'm like, this is for me. This is what I want to do. This is going to be great. Uh, so we did that for a bunch of years. Eventually we climbed up the ladder. We became assistant location manager. So that is the person that is in charge of looking after all the locations. Uh, kind of the liaison between the city, you're getting the permits, you're getting everything in between the neighbors you're talking with and all this filming at the houses and whatnot, making sure everything runs smoothly. And after a 15 hour day of doing that, like run off your feet and super, super busy, I would go home and do more permits and contracts and all this stuff. After two months of this, you can imagine I got burnt out. So then I gave it. Uh, and I'm like, I need to pursue something different. I'm going to be dead by the age of 30. I'm 34 now, so I'm not dead yet. Woohoo. Uh, so I pursued and pursued and eventually became a background coordinator. So that's the person in charge of the extras. You're setting them, placing them, helping them get paid, making sure they aren't running around with chickens cut off with their heads. And it was great. I love that job. So for two years, I did that, got very good at it. I, at least I like to think so. And then 2023 happened. So that is now, that is the film industry and the writers go on strike. So it's going to be a hundred day Plus, I do support them, solidarity, all that fun stuff. But hey, guys, I'm out of work now. So 
come on chop chop maybe producers or writers like at least go in and talk that's all i ask at least talk anyway so the right strike killed it so now i deliver for amazon i've been doing that for a couple of weeks now and and another video will let you know how it is because yeah we'll let you know how it is in another video here because i could get into that for like hours but we won't anyway so after that uh and I, it made me think as well, where I'm like, what is that magic word? Passive income. How do I get? I want, as don't we all. So I started thinking outside the box. So my wife and I, we do have a droplet trailer. It's like a teardrop trailer. Here's a picture of it. It's beautiful. I love it. And uh, we use it a lot. We're going traveling down to the states this year we went up to the yukon last year we love this trailer and we use it like every chance we get but we aren't using it every weekend or you can't book a spot in bc because you know bc is crazy to get camping sites so what do we do we rent it out so i've been renting out an rd uh, outdoorsy and rv vezi making an extra 200 300 on a weekend which is great uh, the other thing that we do is a little bit of Twitch streaming on the side and really you might not say that's passive income or like a side hustle But really I'm playing video games anyway, and I like to talk anyway, so Why not do both at the same time? And even if it's not much, it's a little bit and then the other thing is maybe on cake we'll stream and then the other which is definitely a side hustle But really I'm just sitting around in my car and listening to audiobooks while I drive around the city and look at pretty houses and deliver food to hungry people is DoorDash and skip the dishes. I've been doing that on the side as well. And uh, on my time off or I finish work early or I wake up early and I can't sleep, might as well go do it. Like for instance, today we went out and made 40 bucks in like hour and 30 minutes. Helps pay for the gas tank for the week to get to work to, for your other main source of income. Am I right? Or am I right? Uh, so, I feel like I've taken my first steps into financial freedom and very, very small, very, very small baby steps for sure. Like they're, they're infant steps, they're, they're puny, but we've taken those first steps into getting a little bit of passive income and the idea is to make more and more. And maybe you're one of those people that have like, I have 30 properties, dude, and I make like $5,000 extra a week of passive income. And that's awesome. I want to hear about that story. Uh, I definitely want to hear about that story. I think it's going to be great. Let me know. Let me know down in the comment section below as well. Uh, remember, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. The YouTube gobs love thumbs up to them. And then if you want to see more videos, because we're planning to do a couple more. That was just my phone falling. Uh, we're going to do the... Uh, the hit the subscribe button. That's the word. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Without further ado, I'll let you get on the rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Catch you next time. Sayonara. Adios.